awesome. So first and foremost, I'm a father, originally from Serbia. I play rugby professionally uh, for 10 years. Uh, I play uh, for professional club and I was a captain of the national team in Serbia for under 18, under 20 and a vice captain of uh, a senior squad. I have my real estate license for six years full-time in real estate business since uh, June 2016. I earned my uh, Certified Residential Specialist designation and Certified Negotiation Expert. I am in Mastery Coaching. I'm a MAPS coaching client, which is a high level of uh, coaching. And if you guys are not in coaching, I highly suggest there are so many great programs out there. Uh, my production, as you can see, 2017, that was my first calendar year that I joined amazing team that uh, is really the reason I'm here today. Uh, I did 2.9 million, 14 units. Uh, 2018, I did uh, 5.7 with 23 units. And last year, I bumped my price point. That's why you see I did uh, 31 units and 13.8 uh, million. Uh, and in this session, we're going to cover who are expireds and cancel listings, uh, way to approach property owners, what are some limited beliefs that uh, many agents have, what are some sources and tools, and I'm going to point out the one I'm using. How do I prepare for, uh, for making phone calls and for listing presentations and how we handle objections? So there's only three reasons why the property doesn't sell. And over 40% of the properties in Miami-Dade County do not sell with that first agent. So probably the most common reason is it wasn't priced well. Because truthfully, pricing is 80% of the marketing. Doesn't matter how much things we do and what exactly we are promoting price is going to be one of the main factors probably the main factor why it probably doesn't sell uh, it can also be a poor condition and it, sometimes i do come across properties that uh, i even increase the price and i just give some staging consultation with the homeowners and uh, we change the marketing and we get that family to the closing table and that's uh, the most important thing for them uh, so there's same, several different ways to approach property owners. I personally like to make phone calls because I'm very efficient and I believe uh, I can reach out to more people. We can text them. There are so many listing appointments I was able to set through text message. Uh, and we really have to mirror and match the way of communication that the homeowner prefers. So some homeowners prefer emails, some prefer phone calls, some prefer text messages, and we really have to accommodate to everybody. A great way of, uh, of approaching property owners also would be a door knocking. I would suggest definitely not uh, during the current situation. Uh, you can also send the mailers and you can do online targeting through Google and uh, social media. So you all have to calculate what is the best for you. If you're just starting, I would probably use uh, a phone calls text because in this country, the, we don't have a minutes. Like for example, I still have in Serbia, uh, everything is unlimited. You can reach out uh, to as many people as you choose to uh, and, uh, and work on setting appointments. Now, here are some of the limited beliefs uh, that uh, I hear often because I'm teaching this uh, class at least six times a year in uh, different offices and also I'm teaching it in my market center. Uh, you can only succeed with expired and cancel listings by being aggressive and direct. I, withdrawn, you, we're not allowed to reach out to withdrawn, so please disregard that. I meant to put expired and canceled. Uh, and the truth is that you can win with expired and canceled listings by coming from contribution, establishing trust, and staying in touch. Uh, last year, I sold uh, our team sold uh, over a million dollar property that uh, we were reaching out with a homeowner for over two years. Yet it was worth it because at the end he wasn't interviewing anyone else. He just met with me. Uh, we had a great uh, appointment. Uh, understand what are their goals and needs, and we were able to present their success we were able to present them with our success plan and get them to the closing table. Uh, and also I hear, especially in my office, the me that everybody's calling them. And truthfully, less than 1% of uh, our board is contacting them and that's the fact. Uh, so don't, don't be afraid of competition. I think competition is always great and healthy and uh, competition is something that's gonna move us forward. Now, I'm gonna talk over sources and tools. 
So here are some of the popular data providers uh, that uh, I'm, I know, and I'm sure there's many more. Uh, Redex, Landvoice, Mojo, Arch Agent, Vulcan 7, Espresso Agent, MyPlus Leads, uh, and we want to use uh, accurate data that is provided for us. And the reason why is because we don't, we want to make sure we are reaching out to the decision makers, right? Uh, so I highly encourage you, if you are thinking about uh, jumping into this game of prospecting expired listings, make sure you invest in your data because at the end of the day, if we are calling the wrong phone numbers, we are not going to have a success at the level that we want. Uh, also, amazing tool is to use dialers. Uh, I personally use Mojo Dialer combined with Vulcan 7 data, but in terms of dialers, uh, we want to, you know, explore, do your research, but I'm aware of Mojo Dialer, Arch has the dialer, Vulcan 7 comes with a with a one-line dialer, and Storm is the dialer that comes with a Red X. Uh, so the reason I like to use a dialer is simply because uh, we become very efficient. It, it's a huge difference if we talk with four people every hour or six or eight. Dialer can get you easily to 10 to 12 conversations per hour. And at the end of the day, I like to compare uh, real estate with the rugby, they're both contact sports. And uh, the more people we are able to reach out, the more successful we're gonna be. Uh, some people are gonna give us appointment on that initial phone call. And there's gonna be people, there are people that I'm nurturing since 2016 that I never met them in person yet. We build amazing rapport through these three and a half years and they already trust me. I'm aware of that because some of them are reaching out to me and are showing interest and are asking questions, especially nowadays about real estate market. Uh, please, please, please check do not call list. I don't want anyone to get fined. So make sure if you are investing in any of these providers, they are going to give that option automatically, most of them, uh, because at the end of the day, we want to do things that are right. So make sure you are not reaching out to people that are not on the that are on the do not call list so don't reach out to them now preparation for winning with expireds number one practicing scripts and there's this myth about scripts that they are bad and at the end of the day i'm fur believer that every professional has a script when we go to a doctor appointment doctor is reading scripts right in front of us attorneys are reading scripts when, uh, when politicians are going after to win elections, they're reading scripts in front of thousands of people. Scripts are giving us ability more than anything to be a great listeners because we don't have to think what we're gonna say. We already know how to handle certain objections by practicing them ahead of time. So I would also com compare practicing scripts, it's same like going on a training in any sport. Showtime, listing appointment is same like a Super Bowl. Those athletes are preparing relentlessly to win the Super Bowl by training daily. Well, for us, training is practicing scripts and practicing appointments. Uh, Vesky mentioned very well, and I love her presentation. It was so much nicer than mine. Uh, a lot of nice graphics. So pre-qualify every appointment. You want to find out what is the motivation. You want to find out who is going to be present. Because if we don't have all decision makers present, do we really want to go to that appointment? Do we really want to meet a person who's not able to make the decision? No, many, well, when I started prospecting expires, I made this mistake uh, probably over 10 times. I, I would meet only one spouse and I didn't get any results. So it's very important to meet
did I just get lost? Yeah, uh, I think I think we lost the sound for a little bit. Um, what is so, the last thing you heard? Uh, it was. It's very important that you meet when you were talking about only meeting one spouse. Okay, thank you. I am not sure what's happening. Okay, thank you. Awesome. So we wanna we wanna know if we're meeting both or all decision makers. Uh, I personally like to ask about uh, what price they have in mind. So I know if they are very unrealistic, uh, sometimes I choose not to meet with them. Uh, I like to ask how many agents are they interviewing because I want to know with how many people I'm competing. And some, some people are going to interview five, six, seven agents. I, I went, uh, I went uh, on appointment where they interview over 10 agents. And then there's going to be people that are only going to interview you. So you have to make sure that you stand up. Uh, also, I like to ask about the mortgage balance because I like to always provide the net sheet and share with them, okay, this is, this is how much actually you're gonna walk away uh, from that closing table when we get you and we help you move to whatever the location is. Uh, it's very important to prepare uh, in terms of your market knowledge. Like Wesley mentioned, uh, it's important if you don't know the area and I'm an immigrant, I, I was not born here. I like to drive around the neighborhood, especially uh, higher end neighborhoods that uh, I, don't, I don't have a track record yet at the level where I have somewhere else. Uh, so you also wanna know the, the, what the market is doing. So when I go to a listing appointment, I, like, I always uh, prepare Miami-Dade County if it's a single family home, I would only put information for single family home. So I know how many months of inventory, then I would go down and narrow to a zip code. And then if I have enough of comparables, I would get them from the same subdivision and uh, make sure that I start from county to zip code to subdivision. So the seller knows what's happening overall in the real estate market. Our job is to educate homeowners on the whole picture so they are aware if this is a good time to sell or not. Uh, the same way you practice scripts, it's very important to practice your listing presentation. Practice with your fellow agents, practice with your spouses, uh, boyfriends, girlfriends, whoever you choose to. It doesn't have to be a real estate licensee, but I highly encourage you, encourage you to practice. And the reason why is our average price point uh, for our team is around 325 let's say just $10,000 commission on the table. The difference is when we practice with someone, we, it's basically we are allowed to fail. When we are going to that house, when we're meeting seller, the dining table, we have on average $10,000 commission that we have to earn. So it's much better to practice ahead of time than practice when you meet. We don't want to practice on sellers. Uh, be ready to ask some tough questions. Um, I, had, I had sellers that simply burst and stop, start, started crying. And the reason why is because I wanted to know what is important for them. Because at the end of the day, if I know I cannot help them get where they wanna be, I'm gonna share, shake, shake their hands and I'm gonna walk away. Because I'm, I'm not in the business of uh, listing properties and sitting on the market. I'm, we should be all in the business of helping people. So if I'm confident that seller is stuck with X price and I know I cannot deliver because simply market is not supporting that, uh, I have to have fiduciary duty and say, this is not the price that I'm gonna able to help you with. Uh, and I wish you all the best because at the end of the day, I, I wanna be able to go and sleep peacefully. And very important thing is learn how to handle objections. And uh, don't look at the objections as something negative. Objectives, objections are great things. The more questions we get, the more interested these people are. If the seller doesn't ask me any question and it's a expired listing, more than likely they're not even interested in hiring me. So having questions from the sellers, it's a great, great thing. Now I'm gonna go over some uh, most common objections. 
and I'm going to share with you what exactly I say. So when they say not selling anymore, I always ask them, well, tell me a little bit more. What changed? According to our multiple listing service, last night I noticed that you were still accepting offers. Would you still accept offer today? And then usually when I mention would you still accept offer, uh, they get a little more curious and then I move on with the, with the conversation. Now, the one of also most common objection is uh, staying with the same agent. Now, before I answer how I handle this objection, one thing I want to share with you, never put other agent, never throw under, other agent under the bus. I don't think it's ethical. And I don't think uh, we always have to, to act the way we would like to be treated. So if I, I wouldn't like someone to throw me under the bus, sometimes it's just the timing. Even though I take the listing and it's the same price, uh, professional pictures, or, same thing that the previous agent did sometimes it's simply the timing so when they say i'm going to stay with the same agent i always ask them tell me a little bit more how did you choose that agent and then let's say unless it's a it's a spouse or a family member let's say oh it's an agent who was sending me mailers for five years great so what i'm hearing is you are working with an agent who knows the neighborhood and he's advertising to your area, correct? So yeah, awesome. So let me ask you something. Are you looking for the neighborhood expert or are you looking for the marketing expert who's not going, only going to advertise to your neighborhood, they're gonna advertise to all 53,000 plus agents in Miami? And then I let them answer. And they say, I'm gonna go for sale by owner because I had a bad experience. I always love to use analogies uh, and uh, there's few that I really love with this specific objection. So I said, well, I understand that. And uh, I mean, what is the worst thing that can happen? Home doesn't sell any, uh, again, right? And they say, yes. Okay, so let me ask you something. If you ever went, to, did you ever go to a restaurant and had a bad service? And they say, yeah, of course. Or did you ever go to a mechanic or had a bad experience? Or any, you can say, did you ever go to, with, to, to, to plane and had a bad experience with a flight attendant. So you can use so many analogies. And the purpose of that is to help them relate to real estate. We all have the real estate license. We all have the same tool, which is multiple listing service, yet we're not all doing the same thing. So back to handling this objection. I asked them, did you ever go to a restaurant and had a bad experience? They say, yes. So what did you end up doing? Did you end up cooking every single meal for you? or you end up just going to a different restaurant. And they say, yeah, well, I start going to a different restaurant. Awesome. Well, just because we have real estate license doesn't mean that we are all the same. We all do things differently. And I'm sure you wanna get a second opinion that is potentially gonna net you the more money and that's what you want, right? And that's one of the ways how we get a uh, listing appointment. Now, when they say I have a friend or a further family member that has a license, I always like to ask a question, that's awesome. And may I ask you, is that agent the previous agent that you work with? And usually what I hear is no. And I ask them, well, what is the reason you didn't choose that agent initially? And then they tell me because many times what I believe is that they might even, that's their, that's their script for us just to get us off the phone. So I asked them, well, is your friend or family member a full-time agent? And then I keep digging deeper. What is the production? And I always, at the end of the day, I want people to have multiple opinions. And I asked them simply, well, I'm sure a second opinion wouldn't hurt since I do have a track record of helping homeowners that were on the market one, two, sometimes even three times. Uh, and I was able to help them after that. Uh, if they say we're going to wait until blank, so let's say we're going to wait until September. I always ask the question, well, what is important about September? Tell me, tell me more about that. Well, we want to move. I have a, we want to move into a different school district. Great. And then I continue conversation and digging for more. And I ask them, well, if there is a way for you to get into that school district, especially now when schools are closed, and potentially net more money, would you be open to meeting with me for 30 minutes? 
Uh, and then when they ask me, what are you going to do differently about this one? I always explain them. Uh, I always ask questions, well, I'm not sure what I'm gonna do differently because I don't know what your previous agent did. So tell me a little bit more, what did your agent do for you? And now we have Q&A, seven minutes. Which are some of the best resources, authors, or scripts that you use, and which are your best recommendations? Thanks. Okay, Dave. So there's so many great authors for scripts, and I don't really use one author and I follow only that one. I, I, I role play with uh, a lot of people that uh, that are uh, in Mike Ferry, uh, Tom Ferry coaching. Uh, I also role play with a lot of agents that are not even in Miami or Florida. Uh, a lot of agents that I role play with are not even in the in in Carol Williams. Truthfully, I role play with people who are going to be dedicated to wake up early and role play with me at seven and seven thirty. Uh, and I do currently eleven sessions a week of role play. All of the sessions are early in the morning. Uh, so. I mean, Glover, Jeff Glover is a, a mega agent who sells over a thousand homes in uh, Michigan. He's great. He's my agent. He, he grows so much and he, he developed his career through, through prospecting, expires and for sale by owners. So there's really no one fit all. I would highly suggest uh, get a lot of scripts and find out which one works best for you. At the end of the day, uh, I'm not reading, I never had scripts in front of me. I just practice so much that I memorize them and I make them my own. I want to, I generally care about people and I want to know what they want. Uh, and also I want to focus on listening. I want to focus on their words. And so many times they ask me, are you still there? Because I'm so quiet and I'm simply listening. And that's really thanks to scripts. Uh, Gabriel asked me, how has business changed for you with COVID? Uh, well, it definitely changed. In April, uh, I only signed one expiry listing and uh, we are still prospecting. I did uh, went through a little cons uh, consolidation with uh, in terms of my database to get more organized. Yet, uh, there's still motivated people. That, that's for sure. Uh, we just have to really ask questions. I ask more questions how would you prefer to meet virtually? And I always, I always support virtual meeting nowadays. I ask them if the property is uh, owner occupied. If it's not, that's a great listing nowadays because the truthfully, the single family homes are, uh, the inventory is very low. Uh, Pedro asked me, how often do you role play? I role play 11 times a week uh, with the different, uh, different agents. Myra asked me, Mate, can I call you and practice with you? Like one time, yes, I'll, uh, I, I can commit to more role play partners. Honestly, 11 times is a, a lot already. And I'm thinking about parting ways with few of them. Uh, yet my phone number is 305-924-3393. Feel free to shoot me a message. Give me some time, a few hours, and I'll respond to you. And I'll be more than happy to have a uh, one practice conversation and guide you and share with you whatever I know. Jenny asked, do you ask the same questions with commercial expireds also? Are the dialers for residential or com commercial properties as well? Great questions. I am not trying to be a jack of all trades. Truthfully, when I come across commercial lead, uh, I pass it to commercial specialists because, and I, of course I ask for referral fee and I am sending that to commercial agents that are not doing residential, which uh, it has to be, I think every relationship in life has to be a two-way street, uh, even though I have to give, but I also, I love to, to get some easier battles and uh, definitely agent to agent is easy battle. Uh, dialers do have some commercial properties as well, not on the high level. Can you repeat your numbers, please? 305. Nine two four three three nine three. 
and someone asked, can we shadow you? Yes, uh, our team has an open book, sorry, open door policy. Anyone is able to come, shadow, uh, learn. We have a great team, five salespeople. Uh, we, did, uh, we helped 82 families uh, last year, and uh, this year we're looking to help many more. Any other questions? And didn't get your number one more time, please. Absolutely. 305-924-3393. How often do you follow up with expireds? Depends on their time frame. If someone tells me uh, I'm selling in six months, I'm gonna follow up with them. Uh, I'm gonna set them on the market update. They're gonna be receiving uh, market updates from my CRM uh, once every two weeks. And I'm gonna call them at least once a month. Even though they said six months, I'm calling them to make sure they are receiving my updates. Uh, do we have a business presentation video, Narda? Uh, tell me a little bit more about uh, business presentation video. I'm not sure I understand that. Sorry, this is my third language. Um, what do you include in your pre-listing package? I send a video. Uh, I send a video about our success stories. Uh, I send a video about our team, and the reason why is because uh, when I get to the to the homeowner uh, home, I like to focus on them. I don't really like to focus uh, too much on what we're doing and how many great tools are we using. I like to find out what are their goals and needs. Uh, besides finding expires on the MLS, where else do you find them? Uh, question from Jenny. Jenny, we are using uh, Vulkan 7 as a data provider and integrated with the Mojo Dialer. Uh, if you really wanna increase your listing game in terms of expired, I suggest get one of the tools. Vulcan 7 is uh, probably one of the more expensive ones, yet uh, start with Redex, start, start with something that's a little more affordable and uh, build your way up. Uh, should I contact them one day after listing expires or wait longer calls immediately in the morning? I'm calling them at 8 a.m. the very next day to be honest with you guys. Uh, do you do a digital or hard copy listing presentation? So a listing package, do you give the seller with something after your presentation? I do not leave anything behind me uh, unless they sign the listing, of course. Uh, I do everything digitally nowadays, unless it's something in the area that is super close to the office, uh, then I would drive and leave the listing package as a hard copy. Um, how long did it take me to convert my first expired? Uh, I went to, to probably 30 appointments and I got 30 lessons on how not to sign uh, expired listing. So it probably took me like four or five months. I was just very persistent, <laughs> relentless. Like uh, Wesley said, we have to be relentless in this business. Uh, can you teach a class again, but the longer version, please? Absolutely, I'm actually talking with the board. I have been talking with the board since January about this class because I found a need to talk more about this do you uh, so sasha definitely we are gonna have this in a board uh, in a classroom in the future i hope so uh, do you ever use virtual assistant to call uh, we do have a right now we do have a telemarketer as a part of the team when i started it was soggy agents uh, so it's all the leverage i suggest uh, you as an agent you prospect your own expires and the reason why is because I believe there is no better bootcamp for the realtor and we're not gonna find more objections than prospecting expires and for sale by owners. Uh, it's great to receive a call from your past clients or referral or agent from other area saying, hey Matt, I have a warm, I have a hot referral for you. Yet I, I'm true believer that uh, something has to keep us on our toes uh, and I would uh, encourage you, you make your phone calls. Lead generation is one of the last thing you want to leverage. Um, did you keep a journal of these 30 <laughs> first listing appointments? No, I didn't. I'm very bad with uh, journaling. I did not master that skill yet, uh, so I'm not very consistent. Do you take listings overpriced? Uh, depends on the price point. Uh, I had a theory before not to go 5% above my recommendation. 
and I like to cause that auction effect. I had many listings that uh, got multiple offers, some of them in excess of 14, 15 offers sold over asking price. So I always like to use that uh, success stories from the past and uh, educate uh, homeowners and say, well, this is what happened with uh, John Smith family. He was thinking he wanted to go at this price. We recommended this and we were able to get him this. So it's always easier to use uh, your past experience. And if you don't have one, you can use your office. Which real estate YouTubers do you follow or web pages? Um, I did this in beginning, and I am not. Uh, I'm really not following YouTubers anymore uh, or web pages. Honestly, I, I do go to a lot of events, uh, to a lot of conferences, and mostly my surrounding is. Uh, People who from very beginning keep uh, pushing me uh, and encouraging me when I was failing. I mean, going on a 30 appointment without signing listing uh, and it was my fault every single time. It's a lot. Yet, um, really, you, 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 you have to allow yourself to fail and even nowadays we're all failing, but uh, failing means only if we quit. Uh, I see failure as a lesson and uh, something that uh, I can use in the future. Thank you for being so honest. Thank you. What's your daily schedule? Oh, I don't know if you guys want to hear this, but I changed my life. I had a very big uh, life change when I uh, switched companies. So nowadays I wake up at four, I exercise. I used to go to Orange Theory at five. Now I have to figure something out else. So I'm running. Uh, around Dadeland, like a crazy person uh, at 4.30 in the morning. Uh, these are the days I'm not with my son. So I like to be in the office 6, 6.30. Uh, I read a little bit, I meditate. Uh, then I have my role plays at 7 and 7.30. And uh, then I call expires at eight o'clock and uh, trying to find out if there is still motivation. And thank you guys so many for, for, for these amazing questions. Well, thank you so much, uh, Mate, and you know we really appreciate it. Well, we, we've taken more of your time than we had planned, and thank you for all the attendees for all your great questions.